This video will outline the steps required to manually configure two UR relays to communicate to each other using Goose messaging. In our example, Relay 1 will be configured as the publisher and Relay 2 will be configured as the subscriber. We will begin by configuring the fixed Goose message. We'll start with Relay 1, which is the publisher. Some of the things that we need to be aware of if we're going to be using RTTs um, is setting up the contact inputs for their voltage thresholds. So the first thing that we need to do is go down to the inputs and outputs section of the publisher, which is relay number one, going into the inputs and outputs, going into the contact input thresholds and adjusting it from 33 volts down to 17. The RTTs are only capable of a 24 volt threshold, so we need to change this first. Once these are changed, select save. This will now save it into the relay. The other thing that we need to configure as well is to verify that the metering portion is working as well because we'll be sending analog signals as well. So from, from the setup program, system setup, we'll go in here into the AC inputs. Let's set up a configuration for the currents. And we'll change the CT primary from the default of one amp to 1000 amps primary. Leave the CT secondary as one. We'll save this. Next, we'll configure the voltage inputs, where we have a choice of either Y or delta. Let's leave it for Y for this present configuration. And the only thing we'll change here is the phase VT ratio from one to 35 to one. Press the tab key. This will allow us to enable the save. We'll save this. Now, the most critical point of this is the, the last part, let me just move this up, is the signal sources. These need to be turned on. So first of all, the phase CTs, we'll select our module that we're going to be expecting the imp current inputs from, and the phase VT voltage, which we click on the pull down, this will be changed to F5. We will save this values. Now, let's verify that everything that we've programmed so far is actually working. Let's close these windows. First things first, let's come down to the actual value section. Make sure we're actually uh, creating these values. Coming down to the metering portion. Come down to the source. Good, we're getting some readings. Excellent, there's the currents. And let's confirm the voltage as well. And we're getting voltage readings as well. Perfect. Let's also check our contact inputs to confirm that their states are changing as well. Now that we've confirmed that the analog signals are working, let's verify the digital signals. So, with the aid of my, my colleague here, Antoine, we're going to verify that the digital inputs are working as well. The digital inputs are located under actual values, and under actual values, we're going to go down to status and then open up contact inputs, and we're going to close the switches to verify that they're operational. Fantastic. And switch it off for me, please. Good, because these will be our signals that we're going to be publishing. Now, from the publishing point of view, there's a couple of things that we need to do from the fixed goose side of this. First thing we're going to do is we need to go into product setup under settings. We need to get into the communication tab, and we're going to go down to IEC 61850. Under 61850, there is a transmission tab and a reception tab. We're going to focus first on the publisher side, which is going to deal with the transmission tab. We're going to open this up. We're going to look at a couple of things here. First of all, the general. What is this? This is how often we're going to update the information on the network if there's no change in information. The whole point here is that we do not publish any data onto the network unless there's a change in state or we exceed a specific dead band and the analog signals. 
so that we don't bombard our network, this is how often the information will be updated. This is adjustable between 1 second and 60 seconds. For our application here, let's reduce it down to 1 second. We'll save that, verify it, so we'll have an immediate response as to uh, when we do a change. Let's save that into the relay. Let's close that. The next thing, we have two types of gooses here. We have GSS E and fixed goose. These two are very similar in nature. Let me just open them both up. What's important here is this. They will not both operate at the same time. They will conflict with each other. So when we're doing this manually, one of the things that we have to do is disable the GSSE. You can see they're very similar in appearance. There's a function ID, destination Mac. The fixed goose has a couple of other security features built into it, VLAN priority, VLAN ID, E-type application ID. This is why we're going to use the, the fixed goose as opposed to the GSSE. So first things first, let's disable this. We'll save it. We'll close this down, no longer needed. Now with the fixed goose, we will now turn this on. We'll enable it to begin. And the ID is the name of the goose message itself. Every goose message that's going out across the network has to have a unique name. There are some naming criterias that we have to be aware of. We cannot leave any spaces between two words unless it's, unless there's an underscore between the two words. So to have a word, a goose message name like this is totally illegal unless it's covered by an underscore. So in this case, we're going to call this, uh, this goose message, we'll call it motor A. We'll set up the VLAN priority with four. Um, VLAN ID, let's put a one in here, and E-type application ID, a one. Now this can be whatever you want, just as long as you remember what the, the subscription side has to have the same information as well. So it's extremely important to keep in mind what this information is. Let's save this. All right. Now, on the fixed goose, we have to go down to the inputs and outputs section to basically publish the signals that we're going to be transmitting across the network. So, under inputs and outputs, let's expand this here come down to contact inputs and outputs and what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this area here the remote outputs because these are our, our our bit pairs that we use for fixed goose messaging so let's start off first with this the DNA bit pairs there's 32 bit pairs and in here is going to determine what the signals are that we're going to publish this can be uh, a breaker status can be a contact switch status this can be a protection element because all we're doing is sending here, all we're sending here is a digital signal. So in our case, let's go with contact input number one. So we can type it in, contact space input one on. So that means every time the switch closes, we're going to be sending the goose message out, or if it opens or if it closes. Every time the state changes, we're going to be updating the network immediately. So we click on save. This concludes the publisher part of the fixed goose. Now I'll configure relay number two to be the subscriber. The first thing that we need to do is we need to go down into the, into the settings section under inputs and outputs. And the very first thing that we need to go to is our remote devices. We'll open up remote devices. This is where we have to list the goose messages that are remote to us. So the goose message that we were looking for from relay uh, one is a message called motor underscore A. Make sure we get the E-type application ID, which in this case was one. And this will now, we can save this. Let's hit yes. The next thing that we need to do, we can close this now, is go down to our remote inputs.
And in here, we can go in and actually give the name of the remote inputs that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, we can call this, let's say, Breaker 152A, just to give it a name. Beside the device, it will list the different uh, goose messages that, are, that we're going to be looking for, that we're going to be subscribing to. In this case, this is motor underscore A. And under item, we have to select which bit position in that DNA message we're looking for that information. We had selected DNA number one, so we'll place that in there. And the other settings, we'll just leave at their defaults. Save that. Hit yes. All right, now we'll close this. Let's confirm that we actually have our goose messages going across. On relay number two, we're going to open this up and we're going to go ahead and go down to the actual value section and we're going to verify the status of our goose communications. The very first thing I normally check for is go to the remote device's status. This will tell us whether we're actually communicating with the other relay or not. Here it says all remote devices online. Here's our goose message and it says yes, we are online with it. If there was an error in any of the programming, this would not be online, it would be indicated as offline. Next what we'll do is we'll confirm that this is, uh, the goose message is now being published across. Let's close these down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on, this is relay number two. So let me just minimize some of these settings here. We're going to go to relay number two. We're going to go down to actual values and we're going to confirm that the goose message has been published and subscriber is seeing the values. So under actual values, we're going to go to status and we're going to go to remote inputs. When we open remote inputs, we'll see the name of the goose message uh, signal that we're interested in, breaker 152A. Antoine, close the switch for me. So it's verified that yes, it did change states, so the message is getting across to relay number two. This concludes the goose publication or the subscriber side of the fixed goose.